You will not find such a diversity of urban fauna anywhere else in the world, only in India. Cows, pigs, dogs live on the streets here. All of them, strangely enough, fulfill one function. They are hospital aids of the city. They eat dirt, garbage, everything that remains from humans. It is possible to treat differently this way of life, but for a very poor and overpopulated India, this is the normal state of things. <laughs> to be honest, if I was Mowgli from the famous Jungle Book, I would not hurry to return to people here. But the inhabitants of this country formed such a living space here, and this is normal, familiar to them. Do you know, dear friends, that the length of the coastline of India is over 4,300 miles? This is a huge distance, 4,300 miles of coastline. All these miles are washed by different seas and oceans. The Arabian Sea, the Indian Ocean, and the Bay of Bengal. There are a lot of fish here. It's the Indian Ocean, and many fishermen. And the fishermen have their own superstitions, their symbols, their talismans, their beliefs, their animals, and the fish that bring them luck. Hello. Working? Who speaks English here? English? No. Hindi? Gujarati? The official languages of India are Hindi and English. Well, fishermen are simple. They are local. They understand each other and, generally, you won't talk with the fish a lot. So, they only communicate in their native dialect. Well, they're friendly, at least. I do not speak Gujarati, unfortunately. Yeah, guys, I'm sorry. I don't know your dialect, but I speak Russian. Not bad, I believe. How can I talk to you, huh? And there's no translator. Hmm. And I didn't learn Portuguese, but many people speak it here. A heavy colonial heritage, you know. The fact is that it was not the English who were in charge here. These lands were acquired by the Portuguese in the beginning of the 16th century. They established Christian control over the eastern trade routes. All the coast, right up to Goa, was a Portuguese colony. Although almost to the middle of the last century, this part of India, in particular the Dew Island, was under the patronage of Portugal. There are still a lot from Indians here. Despite the fact that the Portuguese brought here their particular color, pay attention to the flags. I think that these ships sailed under these flags 50 and even 100 years ago, till now. It seems that fishermen do not pay too much attention to some symbolic meanings of animals. But they can also remember that the god Vishnu had been incarnated in fish to warn humanity about the flood. He is even portrayed as a half fish, half man. But the Indians arrange the ritual associated with this incarnation only once a year, all in its time. With the abundance of gods and their avatars, which require veneration, it's impossible to do otherwise. Here, everyday life is connected with other deities. We drink milk before leaving. You drink milk? Yes, look, we just brought it. Is this for the whole team? Your whole team which drinks milk before you go to the sea? Yes, that's how it works. These are the fans of Gualtama for sure, the cow patroness. However, I don't know. Maybe for children, it's a chance to just drink such tasty milk before a long swim. Looking at their ship, I assume that they will soon have to eat only what they catch. Although, I might not refuse a week of the freshest seafood. The main thing is to not fall overboard. Ah, it's a lobster. Ha, ha, ha.
but if I had more time, I wouldn't refuse going to sea with them. It is absolutely amazing fishing here. That in incomparable with three gudgeons and two bleaks in the midland of Russia. There are more than 100 species of commercial fish, tuna, sardines, marlin, and sailfish, mackerel, sea bream, and finally sharks. While I was looking at the schooners and dreaming of seas and coral, I suddenly saw a tip which helps me to choose a direction to move. You see, there are lions on the flags. People walk under the flags with a land animal into the ocean. And when it is about the ocean, we mean that there should be some kind of mermaid, octopus, sperm whale. No, here in India, look, there are flags with the Asian lion. And it's very cool. I had a reason to come to Gujarat. This is the only place on earth where the Asian lion lives. But I still take short views because it may very well happen that this rare animal just does not want to show itself to me. It maliciously looks at me from everywhere for a while. You can't pass here along the line without mentioning it. And I want to see myself to make sure that it can be considered a real talisman of India. If you want your travel to India to be successful, you must appease the local gods. The easiest way to do this is to buy florets. Bring them to the temple and everything will be fine. That's what I'm going to do now. But what I want to show you is that you all remember our domestic coins. These coins depict the two-headed eagle. Well, it is not for nothing called eagle tails. So, there is not an eagle at all. There are three lions drawn here. And these three lions are the main symbol of India. However, I did not reach the temple. The first deity on the street got my offering. You know, I really like to go to places where there are no noisy crowds of so-called civilized people who smeared with sun cream and cameras around their necks. The real life of the country exists in such remote corners. You'll find out how ordinary citizens of India actually live only here. It is interesting to observe the life of a simple small coastal town. You know, this is not a tourist place. Tourists don't reach this place, only Indians live here. And they live happily. I've already said that the fauna which is represented on the Indian streets, boggles the imagination. There are goats, cows, dogs, cats, birds, chipmunks, monkeys, and they all coexist with people together and live well. The everyday scene here looks like a man brought greens apparently to his restaurant and the goats stole them all. <laughs> Here, take it. Oh, you are so little. Come to me. Oh. You're so small. Look, Lem, your heart is beating so fast, huh? You are so warm, little cutie. Look at his cherubic face. I already said that this is a Portuguese place. So Portuguese that it looks even more like the colonial cities of Latin America. Here, for example, the cathedral is built in the mold of European Catholic churches. And just like on that side of the globe, nature surrounds the symbols of other countries and eras in the most unexpected way. In the morning and evening, there are public worship services in the Church of St. Paul. And all the rest of the time here, you see there are nests of parrots, green parrots, whom there are a lot of here, on the island of Dew, and in India in general. He says to me, hello. 
and yet it's time to achieve the goal of the whole trip. I want to see an Asian lion. But on the road, I find out again and again how intertwined is the life of people with the life of nature here. We are convinced once again that animals and people in India coexist. We pass by, stop near the school. It turned out that a real leopard came to the school. All the children were evacuated. They have a holiday. They do not need to study. And we will now take part in the rescue operation, saving a private leopard. Let's go, guys. Show us where you have it there. Can you see where he is? The leopard, one of the largest and most common cats in the world. They live, of course, not only in India, but here, perhaps, the very place where these kittens unceremoniously interfere with ordinary people. What should they do? People need more and more space. And in fact, they are occupying the habitat of these beautiful spotty creatures. Despite the fact that it would seem a state of emergency on a regional scale, a wild beast ran into the school, no panic was observed. They got used to it. It doesn't happen every day, and the visit of the leopard is, of course, a stir, but it's rather a child's turmoil. They don't want to learn, I understand, and now they've got a reason for it. They're still working here. Now that's all. The leopard has been taken out. The wildlife rescue service has arrived. They have to put him in hibernation because there are a lot of people around. No one knows what could happen. There are many leopards here in this region of India, and there are situations when they wander into cities. Now, a leopard, here they are, saviors. Leopard rescuers. Well done. <laughs> High five. High five. High five. High five. Well done. <laughs> Coconut fructifies all year round. It is the perfect food product. It consists of carbohydrates and fats. You won't die because of hunger with it. Give me one. Come on. I'll try it right now first. What if I don't like it? How many days can I return products to you if I don't like it? Can I return it? Do you know our legislation? Photo with you? Okay, don't Okay, come on. Come on. A selfie. Come on, like I'm drinking. Look, there's not much milk in this coconut. Although in the eastern market, and you need to be very active during trading. I know that there is no milk in coconuts, according to books, only water. And it depends on when it was torn down, on what maturity stage. The older the coconut, the less endospermia remains inside. Well, sweet coconut water scientifically is called so. I have to tell you that, here and over time, it turns into such a fatty, jelly-like substance. They are bred with water and sold by calling it milk. As you know, a coconut is not only... Ah, that's a lie. Here it is, deceit. You know, you are so good at it, huh? A coconut is so little inside. And I was wondering why there was so little milk. A coconut is a plant that is extremely useful from and to. Even these airy things are used for a purpose, and they cost a lot, especially when they are used in a mattress. It is called koira, echo material, and they will put the appropriate label. Well, after all, that's not why I came here. I continue to search for hoku fruits. Where are they? What? How is it called? Some unknown fruits with strange names. Ah, yes, that's our potato. Indian potato. But where are the hoku? Oh, I see mandarins, a banana tree, 
Ah, here they are. Here they are. Typically brown. Similar to what, I don't know. Like a bun? They look like a bun. Okay. Sir, how much do they cost? Is it possible to eat for a man or not? Give it to me. I'll take two. Two, 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 two. And show me how to eat it. That's how it is with dirty hands in India. On the market, I can do this. I feel dysentery somewhere near right now. I feel these infected spatulas penetrated in me with this unwashed vegetable right now. Or is it a fruit after all? Disinfection immediately. But for this, I will go to another market. Here they trade Indian gold. Since the time of the colonists, they call spices gold. It seems to be more spices here than in any other country. They generously pour all Indian dishes with them. Spicy spices not only give them a special taste, there's nothing to be mixed up with, and most importantly, the original product is not recognizable after this. And spices also disinfect the food. India also surprises with its smells in addition to paints. There are a lot of smells here and they are all different, especially when they beat the nose of ordinary European citizens. We are not accustomed to this and it's normal for them. Here, for example, there is such a mountain of spices which consists of cinnamon, coriander, clove and some other little dried plants. But I feel this will be an excellent seasoning for soup and maybe even excellent mulled wine. There is such an ethnographer's sign. If people have spicy food, lots of spices, then the people traditionally lived in poor conditions because first, they were not always able to get fresh food and were forcing to fight with different bacteria. Second, sharp food always makes people feel full. I was interested in, I don't know what it is. I think it's hin, hin. It's cloves, I know that, hin. It looks like our toffee, but the taste it doesn't bite. I'll pay. What is this? I need to understand. Oh, it's split up. Can I eat it? Eat it, right? No? No, no. Ah, it's for the soup. Well, okay then. In India, everything is understandable about the cuisine. The spices aren't only for the food but they just eat them. Can you imagine that? Eat spices without anything. I can't, but sometimes you just have to, and not even because of an infection. I found an aniseed, and do you know that after meals, in Indian restaurants, waiters give you anise. Anise has an antiseptic, a spasmatic effect, as far as I can remember, and most importantly, it's also a laxative. So a spoon of this, and everything will be fine. Here in the Gujarat state, anything decently nutritious doesn't grow. Do you know, dear friends, that most of the gypsies migrated to Europe exactly from the Gujarat state 900 years ago? And if you think that Romanians, Bulgarians, Hungarians are the roots of the gypsy gender, it's not true. Gujarati gypsies live here now, as well as thousands of years ago. And because of the poverty of the food resource, people here always led a nomadic life, even now. Here live the poorest population of India now, local gypsies. Здравствуйте, hello. Hello, hello, how are you? Hello. Hello, how are you? The lives of most of these wonderful people pass in such beautiful shacks. And naturally, they're animals too. Oh, she scattered the nuts right near me. Hello, man with stones. Well, what do we have here? Dogs? Goats, children, all here. Well, 
Pay attention. You complain that you have a one-room apartment. People here have two walls and a fence made from a natural palm leaf. But nature's products and nature itself is all around here. Perhaps such a plant life is the secret of the invariable friendliness of Indians, but it's all just beyond the edge of exotics for me. You're the eldest, apparently. Hey, and greetings to you. Strong handshake, strong, like a real man. Very friendly people, by the way. People, there is no aggression. The whole village is here now. Well, it is because a white man with a camera is here. Pay attention that they are very harmonious with nature around, despite the fact that they are building some kind of municipal social housing for these people, apparently. They just live for themselves. You know, it's a funny little lamb. Hi, hi, hi. What kind of ground here? You can see for yourself. I don't know what can grow in such conditions. I have a feeling that everything that was trying to grow here was eaten upright. They ate it and wandered further on. No, they are still cooking something. Thank you. Hello, hello. That's what the kitchen looks like. Well, fine. Here. Yeah, yeah. A good kitchen. Yeah? Journey cake. I understand. Yeah. Well, women bake journey cakes. It means there is grain somewhere here. They use flour. I wonder which one. I understand that this is not wheat or rice. The cheapest grain here is the dagosa. Have you heard of such a thing? That's it. Me neither. And here it grows. This is almost the most ancient and even not particularly cultivated grass. What do you have here? Making journey cakes on the fire. What? No, 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 no. I can't. My nutritionist doesn't allow me, you know, to eat it. Well, well, my, thank you. Thank you. Here's how to cook on a fire. It's not 18, not 17, and not even 14th century, guys. So for the cultivation of the Dagasa grains, you don't need to do much. In addition, straw and other grass that remains on the field after harvesting is quite suitable for cattle. Here is the tractor. The tractor is standing there. I think that's exactly what they use to provide both themselves and these lambs with food. Unless this technique has not simply been stolen from the neighboring collective farm. Now they will have a master class of the battle for the harvest. Exactly like we do this in our severe climate. The main thing is to smile. You are perceived as normal here. Sit down? I would, I would, where? Where would I go with you guys? Guys, leave all of you. Where? Put in gear, yeah. So? What am I doing here in this gypsy village? They let me drive the tractor. Hey, kids! Duck, get out of the way. I'll ask you now. Duck, go away. Thank you very much. I haven't driven a tractor in a long time. Those are nice people. They sacrificed the collective farm machinery to me. You know, indeed, they offered me the most precious thing they have, bread and this tractor. And all this with full cordiality. The simplest housing is here. It's a canopy. 
It is clear that if they lived like this in the middle zone of Russia, it's unlikely that this canopy would protect them from our cold weather. But the weather here is still plus point year-round, so you can sleep here. That's how people live. This is mind-boggling. For us, it's completely inhumane conditions. But the children are smiling here. They're all healthy. Well, or almost everyone.